Why wasn't Ethiopia colonized? On the first day of March 124 years ago, traditional warriors, farmers and pastoralists, as well as women defeated a well-armed Italian army in the northern town of Adwa in Ethiopia. The outcome of this battle ensured Ethiopia's independence, making it the only African country never to be colonized. Adwa turned Ethiopia into a symbol of freedom for black people globally. Africa, which was the main victim of colonialism, is said to have two nations which were never colonized, Ethiopia and Liberia. In order for us to understand why Ethiopia wasn't colonized, it is important that we first understand what colonialism is. Defined as the control by one power over a dependent area or people, colonialism occurs when one nation captures another, conquering its population and exploiting it, mostly while forcing its own language and cultural values on its people. The concept of colonialism is closely related to that of imperialism, which is the policy of using power and influences to control another nation or people. By 1914, a vast proportion of the world's nations had been colonized by Europeans. Colonization in Africa Beginning in the 1880s, European countries focused on taking control of African lands, racing each other to coveted natural resources and building colonies that will hold until an international period of decolonization began. The colonization of Africa was part of a global European process of reaching all continents in the world, which dramatically changed the world. The rapid colonization of most of the African continent by European powers resulted from the so-called Scramble for Africa. Also referred to as the Partition of Africa, it was the invasion, annexation, division and colonization of most of Africa by seven Western European powers between 1881 and 1941. The reasons for colonization of Africa were mainly economic, political and religious. Africa's abundant raw materials and cheap labor were seen by the European countries to be a good source of money to solve their ongoing economic depression. European missionaries, after focusing on the large working class with the aim of bringing spiritual salvation to the workers and their families in Europe, began to look beyond Europe and so established missions everywhere in Africa. Even though they weren't direct agents of European imperialism, they still drew European governments deeper into Africa as they preached Christianity in the continent. The colonization of African nations was rapid due to reasons like the existence of rivalry between African leaders, natural disasters like drought, which caused food shortage and insufficient energy for the Africans to fight the Europeans, European possession of heavy weapons to apply force and violence on Africans who stood on their way of colonization and the outbreak of diseases which weakened African and made them incapable of fighting the Europeans over their lands. Of course, colonialism had its impacts on Africa which were more of negative than positive, including the disarticulation of the African economy, disarticulation in the type of goods produced by Africans, their markets and trade, distortion in the development of a comprehensive transport system in Africa, the emergence and institutionalization of classes and class struggle in the socio-economic and political life of African people, and majorly colonialism, brought about underdevelopment of African territories in many different ways non-colonized? Nevertheless, a handful of countries including two in Africa were not subsumed by the monstrosity of Western colonization like Turkey, Iran, Japan, and China. Considered as the only two African countries which were viable players in the trade-based world economy, the imperialistic European nations avoided the outright colonization of Liberia and Ethiopia. Now that our scope on colonization has been widened, let us move to Ethiopia and see why it wasn't colonized. The Road to Adwa Abyssinia, now known as Ethiopia, is one of the world's oldest nations and one of the two African countries that avoided colonial rule. With its geographic isolation and economic prosperity, Ethiopians, from farmers to kings throughout the millennia of the country's history, were known for their willingness to come together as one which helped them score decisive victories against a series of global colonialist forces. Ten years before the Adwa battle, European powers had decided the fate of Ethiopia at the Berlin Conference of 1884 to 1885, where 14 European countries divided Africa among themselves. Only about 10% of Africa was controlled by Europeans before the conference, while the remaining 90% was headed by indigenous and traditional rulers. At the Berlin Conference, it was agreed by the European colonial powers that Italy, who already had colonial possession of the Essa port since 1882, could take over Ethiopia as its future colony. As an effect, 
Italy started expanding its presence in the Red Sea. With support from the British, they took over control of the port city of Masala in 1885. From there, Italy slowly moved inland, encountering a number of clashes with locals. Devastated with an infectious viral disease which killed up to 90% of the country's livestock and a third of its population due to famine, Ethiopians were weakened and so Italy's expansion across their land was facilitated. Taking advantage of the Ethiopian crisis, Italy sought to divide and conquer Ras Mangesha of Tigray and Negus Menelik of Sho. Eventually, in May 8089, the Treaty of Wucho, which was written in Amperic and Italian, was signed between the Italians and Menelik. Menelik later discovered that the Italian version of the treaty effectively made Ethiopia Italy's protectorate, contrasting the Amharic version, and so the treaty became the trigger for the Battle of Adwa. Once the tragic devastation of the infection eased in Ethiopia, Menelik began preparations for war against the Italians. He renounced the Treaty of Wachel on the 27th of February 1893 and then sent out a command for the creation of food depots at major centers along the way to Adwa for the sustainment of his army. At the same time, the Italians strengthened their positions in Tigray by attacking Mangasha at Kodin. On the 17th of September 1895, a total mobilization of war against Italy was declared by Menelik, who called on the entire Ethiopian citizens to step out and fight for their nation, family, and religion. Every capable Ethiopian was commanded to fight, while the incapable pray for their victory. From every tribe, culture, and community, Ethiopians answered Menelik's call. His call was also responded by regional leaders from different ethnic and cultural backgrounds that created an army of 100,000 people with inferior weapons, but strong cause. The Italo-Ethiopian War On December 7, 1895 at Ambalalaji, the first showdown of the war took place and a relatively small portion of the Italian army was wiped out. Stationed behind a strong fort at Mel for the second encounter, the Italians were surrounded by Ethiopians who cut off their water supply upon Empress Taitu's advice for two weeks. Already breathing the air of defeat, the Italian commander accepted to surrender if they would be allowed to walk away with their weapons. Menelik agreed to let them leave the garrison unharmed, but instead, the Italians remained in their strongholds, strengthening their positions at Adagrad and Soria. Still not in a hurry to attack their forts, Menelik only watched them from a distance. After an inactive period of two weeks, General Baratieri decided to advance for a surprise attack on the 1st of March 1896, which according to the Ethiopian calendar was the day of Stagorge and so, to the battlefield, the priest carried the tabo a religious icon which stood for the sanctity of Ethiopia. Etij Taitu Bidol, wife of Emperor Menelik, one of the key leaders of the Ethiopian forces, a fearless strategist and brilliant administrator, led 6,000 soldiers to the war front and employed traditional music and war chants, which served as motivation as they fought. With their cannons and machine guns, 20,000 Italian and Italian-trained native troops advanced to put up a brave fight against the Ethiopians before facing a decisive defeat with severe casualties on both sides. Impacts of War The Ethiopian victory in the Adwa War resulted in a change of government in Italy. Prime Minister Francesco Crispi resigned, following the public protest and failure of his colonial policy. Ethiopia and Italy then had negotiations which resulted in the Addis Ababa Treaty which had as key component, the unconditional acceptance of Ethiopian independence and sovereignty. The news of the African victory gained global fame and as an effect, Adwa turned Ethiopia into the symbol of redemption and freedom for black people. From this victory, Marcus Garvey, Gilly B. Dubois, Bob Marley, George Padmore, and others drew special inspiration. The victory also led to the publishing of Pride in Black Identity and African Connection with prominent women writers from 1915 to 1916 in the first Afro-Brazilian newspaper titled O Menelik. Ethiopia linked black people with Africa's ancient glory and future hope. As Marcus Garvey scripted, look to Africa for the crowning of a black king, he shall be the redeemer. After colonial liberation, several African countries adopted the green, yellow, and red Ethiopian flag, and then a universal national anthem was created for black people. Apart from the five-year occupation of Ethiopia by Mussolini's Italy, the country has never been colonized. Till date, Ethiopia still stands as witness to what ordinary Africans can do when they come together. Scoring a decisive victory against global colonialist forces, Ethiopia stood as the antithesis of the colonial worldview. If you enjoyed watching this video, please do not forget to leave a thumbs up.
subscribe and become a member of our growing diverse community here on Think Rich Africa. Thanks for watching and see you in another interesting video.